got this uh, um, oh sort of curve before you get there. Is that a is that a new design that you that uh, the city's using? And can you tell us a little bit more about why you're using that? Um, yeah, there's a lot of different factors that kind of go into that. Um, in this instance, um, based on the budget associated with this project, um, you know, we try to just minimize the, the the work that is required for this intersection. Traffic signals in themselves will help alleviate a lot of the uh, congestion in this area. And so um, the installation of more of your traditional left turn lanes probably wouldn't really do much more than what the traffic signal is already doing. Mm -hmm. But do you see what I do you see what I mean about the if you look at there there's some uh, in that in that left hand left hand turn coming south there are some areas that are hash marked. Correct. And Correct. The, and that's just to um, kind of separate the the left turn lane a bit and deflect it. The image probably doesn't capture it as well, but this left turn lane actually does begin further up um, north and south if which because there are two left turn lanes. So that that kind of separation is kind of already there. Um, we're just allowing by with this design, we just allow pedestrians to kind of ease into the turn rather than have to kind of speed through it to make a a 90 degree turn per se. Okay. So Ivan, regarding that symbol that Rusty was just talking about, is that actually um, drawn on the asphalt or is that concrete separating it from the? No, those going? are pavement markings. Okay. They're um, yes, thank you for asking that question. Yeah, all those are pavement markings. Uh, there will be no uh, medians. Um, yeah, all of it will just be striping. Okay. And uh, since you mentioned that these are, this plan is specific to alleviating left-hand turns, obviously, right southbound and northbound to getting onto Ray White. Um, are are there? I'm assuming this is all probably normal day to day. That how you guys plan this? Um, are there going to be sensors to determine those protected left turns, or is it is it going to be like time based? Yeah, I believe we have um, Aziz on the call. He's a little more familiar with traffic signals than I am. Aziz, could do you? Yes. Uh, yeah. I, yeah. Can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yeah. So this will be uh, have a traffic sensor for all turns, even for the left turn, uh, and it's gonna uh, run as like protected and permitted. So first, it's gonna be on the protected phase, so most clear the queue. Uh, queued vehicle, and then it's going to be another permitted, meaning where it will have a flashing green arrow, flashing yellow arrow for the traffic to make turn. So, first it will show green arrow, then it will show flashing yellow arrow. Does that answer your question? I think so. Uh, part of it. So, and this is 24 7, that it won't. You said the uh, it's all sensor based, so it's not really like during r known rush hour periods. You're going the frequency of the light will be or the timing of the light will be longer or what have you. It's it's just all based on sensors. So it will be based on sensor, but uh, during peak hour where the volume is like it is a platoon of cars uh, uh, comes in at that time, mm. uh, we have even a sensor base. It has a uh, mechanism there where it's hold the green a little longer to flush the queue. So you don't want to break the uh, platoon or queue yeah, in the middle. So this is a, it will be run uh, sensor based, but during the peak hour to flush the traffic, it will have some uh, mechanism there where it can uh, hold, hold the north south green a little longer uh, okay. to clear the platoon. Yeah. Okay, because you have an expectation that that left turn will have more volume during those peak hours, so. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank as, you. As, as well as a lot of school buses come in in the morning as well. Ivan, um, this is Susan Kinney. I have a question. Um, 
on the south side of the intersection when you're on Beach Street heading north, I think somebody was just asking, maybe it was Rusty or uh, maybe the lady afterwards, you have the Chevron striping between the through lane and the left turn lane. Uh, did you say that won't be curbed at all? That is just striping? Correct. Okay, so I mean, that's um, so the pedestrian will be up in the crosswalk. So I guess the timing for the crosswalk, they'll be able to get all the way across without having to wait in the middle. Right. Okay. Okay. And will there be ever be a point where they would have to sit, sit in that Chevron area or not at all? Or no, the the design of that has nothing to do with the pedestrian improvements. Um, the the signal timing and all that is kind of what where the design of the where. It, we take into account the crossing of the pedestrians. Um, the okay. um, if there was in fact a a need for refuge, that would be a complete different design. Yeah. So, is there no way to do a pedestrian refuge because those are kind of a lot safer, aren't they? Like, you, you could you just not do it or fit it or something of that sort. Um, I believe they aren't needed in this for this intersection for this width of intersection. It's you're really. Uh, those refuge areas, it's like really big arterials, um, kind of like the uh, the next project we're going to talk about, uh, which is uh, Beach Street at um, North Terran Parkway. Right. So, but in, in those reality, yeah, if you look at this, you know, you've got the two lanes going north, then you have the turn lane going left, and you have that middle part. In reality, that looks like it's about a four lane road in that one direction, you know, before you get to the median. So it's actually you know, a long distance for the pedestrian. But anyway, I hope it will be safe. But the so engineers think it will be. Add, add, uh, Ivan's response, like, uh, the, it will be timed in a way that there will be, we don't want anybody to stay in the middle of the intersections, like a, a speed, uh, like a, a roadway. So it's going to be one step crossing from end to end. If, the, uh, if a pedestrian starts crossing the road before it goes to the flashing hand, it shows, then it, it sh he should have enough time to cross mm -hmm. the entire the roadway. That's yeah. how it, it's going to be. Okay. Yeah, a lot of times the walker will start later and maybe not make it all the way through, so they'd be stopping at that point of that median, I would imagine, and hope that they don't get hit, you know, because... It's a pointed thing. I don't know if I've ever seen that that much around here. Is that, it's a new thing, right? You're referring to the median nose? Yeah. And with that left turn lane kind of more at an angle, it's not straight like it usually is. So you're taken away from the median nose, maybe. I don't Correct. know. Correct. Correct. Well, the, the median, um, the median work is minimal. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see with the dashes right here. We're just kind of cutting into it and kind of reshaping the nose. Okay. All right. Thank you. You're gonna. You're not gonna have to widen Ray White, right? Not at this time, no. Ray White's wide enough now to do this. Correct. On, along Ray Y, it really is just a striping exercise. Right. And I mean, even really along um, as well in the the median construction. Are there any other questions regarding? Um, Beach Street at Ray White, traffic signal improvements. All right, well, with that, I will um, formally end the public meeting for that project. Um, I will pull up the second PowerPoint for the second project.
All right, can everyone see my screen? Sorry. We see it. All right, so this is the second part of this uh, community meeting. Um, this is for the intersection improvements at North Tarrant Parkway uh, and North Beach Street. Once again, this is located in Council District 4 and 10. Um, and for those that may have missed it initially for the first part, my name is Ivan Lopez and I'm the project manager with the city of Fort Worth. Actually, Ian, this is all, or Ivan, this is all in uh, four. It doesn't, doesn't go far enough to be in 10. Gotcha. Thanks, Rusty. I wasn't going to start a turf war or anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is the agenda for this project. Um, we'll go over the project background and its goals. Um, we'll look at the existing intersection as well as the proposed design and the changes that will be coming with this project, um, the approximate schedule for it, and then the project contact information. Um, and once again, we'll leave it, uh, leave it open for questions at the end. Um, so we are talking about um, the intersection of North Beach Street and North Tarrant Parkway. Um, this is south of Shiver Road, um, west of Park Vista Boulevard, and just east of um, I 35W. So, this project um, is one of the 2022 bond programs. Um, the objective of this project is um, to improve the capacity of the existing intersection. Um, there's a lot of congestion that happens um, due to the lack of uh, lanes essentially at that at that uh, intersection. And so we really hope to be able to improve all the turning movements in all all legs, all directions of this intersection to just make the fluidity of that intersection a lot more. Um, and so it's not so stagnant. Um, and so this project. Um, this project. Um, We've already completed, uh, we did this design meeting for the 30%. Right now we are, um, this is what we're calling um, an update meeting essentially, and uh, you'll see it later in the slide, um, but we are um, at a 90% design level now. So uh, we just kind of wanted to give a, a refresher to the public. So this is the existing intersection um, north, uh, looking uh, to the north is, um, Beach Street and then North Tarrant Parkway from west to east. Um, as you can see from this image of the, this day, there's only a right channelized right turn lane on the southeast corner. Um, and there are only one left turn lane in each direction uh, of this intersection. So with this project, um, on the image you'll see you you see right now um, the hatch that you see the, the the dark hatch are the paving improvements that we are planning on doing. Um, really, in a nutshell, what we're doing is we are going to introduce dual left turn lanes in all directions of the intersection, and we're going to mimic what is happening at the southeast corner of the channelized right turn lane and installing new ones on all on the three other legs of the intersection. Um, to do this, we will be introducing medians um, at three of those four corners. So these next images are just gonna be uh, zoomed in versions of the same graphic that I previously showed. Um, so this is going east down uh, North Tarrant Parkway. Um, so, as you can see, we will be installing, uh, we will be doing median work and introducing an additional left turn lane. So, there will be two dual lefts going northbound. Um, with that, we will be cutting into that corner on the southwest corner um, and introducing a median that will then allow for a channelized right turn lane. So, it'll be a yield condition. And so, hopefully, it will uh, speed up that process in that queue at that intersection. This is North Tarrant Parkway going westbound. Um, once again, dual left 
dual left turn lanes um, in the introduction of that channelized right turn lane going northbound. Um, and so we will be pulling back that turn lane past the Walmart driveway to allow an, for additional queuing um, for the right turn lane. We do hope to install this um, those pavement markings that will prevent people from coming out of the Walmart and turning right, trying to get into the left turn lanes because um, that's one of the major issues out there right now. Um, and so we do hope that that will uh, decentivize people from making that movement. And then these next two images are just Beach Street. Um, the one on the left is going northbound and the one on the right is going southbound. Um, once again, um, just dual left turn lanes with channelized right turn lanes. I'm gonna go back to the overall. So with all these improvements, uh, we will have to uh, reinstall, we'll install new traffic signals um, those new tra those existing traffic signals are now where the proposed uh, improvements are being done. So we will be removing those and installing new ones. Um, some of them are in the pork chops. Actually, sorry, all of them are in the pork chops. Um, and then we will be redoing all the pavement markings within two to three hundred feet of the intersection in each direction. Um, with that, we will be installing all new pedestrian curb ramps with push buttons. Um, and if that person from the previous uh, meeting, this is kind of where we time it or we, we have the refuge areas within those pork chops to allow people to kind of just cross and have a, a safe space to, to wait it out. We will be shortening those median noses, um, bringing them back down um, and then installing on new crosswalks. and signage. So as mentioned before, uh, we had we held a 30% public meeting for this project, um, I believe back in May. Um, currently now we are in the final design phase, uh, about 90%, uh, approaching 100%. Um, so we are getting close to finalizing the design, um, all while we've been working on the right of way acquisition for this project. We do anticipate having that complete January of 2024. Um, and so once uh, the design is complete, we will have another pre-construction public meeting sometime in May, uh, right before construction starts. Uh, we do anticipate construction starting uh, sometime in August of, this, of next year, 2024. Um, and then the project duration, we do anticipate it being about 14 to 16 months. Um, and this project does have a construction cost of about 2.85 million. So once again, my name is Ivan Lopez. I'm the uh, project manager with the city of Fort Worth. Um, Todd Buckingham is the um, uh, designer with uh, Friesen Nichols. Um, they are designing this project. He is on the call and can help answer any design questions that anyone may have. At this time, if anyone has any questions. Ivan, on that, would you show the, the um, east side of um, beach? at North Tarrant, are you going to, in that hash marked area, are you going to put up those cute little uh, standy things that people can't drive through? Or are you just going to think that those pavement markings are going to pe keep people? <coughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe right as of right now, we were, we did look into doing those, um, but we, we landed on just the, the gore striping right now. I don't think that's going to work. Yeah, I mean, this is Todd. And unfortunately, 
Go ahead, John. Unless, and Rusty, uh, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. We on that area, uh, we are not doing the flexible posts. Um, those over time can be challenge to maintain and, and keep in place, but we'll be adding uh, eight inch uh, domes, uh, which are usually raised uh, pavement markers that will you know, deter people from making that turning movement uh, into that gourd area uh, from the Walmart parking lot to that left turn lane. So there will be a, uh, a vertical element there, it won't be as tall as the flexible posts, uh, but those uh, pavement markers uh, that, that will be raised will be there. Okay, well, I just wish that you would uh, keep in mind that unless unless you have something that stops them, that even those won't have much bearing on people coming out of there. They're going to they're going to try it anyway. But the other side of it, this, the other side of it is, is they'll be able to, this this should free up the north the the, the uh, exit from. Walmart that's farther up um, because there won't be that line of traffic that blocks it. So maybe the people will just go up to the north, the, to the one that's farther west, uh, farther east. Um, and we are hoping that that is, um, you know, this is going to be a lot of changes to this intersection. We are hoping that, you know, with time, the public will kind of adjust to the new traffic patterns and they'll find better alternatives of how to maneuver this intersection. Okay. And, and Ivan, this is, this is Todd again in the chat. I saw some people, some people ask the height of those raised markers. So they're eight inches in diameter, but they're only three inches tall. So I don't know if that was confusing the whole eight inch dimension, uh, but they'll once again be eight inches in diameter, only three inches tall. I've seen, I've seen them over in Dallas. Mm -hmm. they're, they're I mean, what, if you, if you go through them, I mean, you'll feel it. It's not just going to be, I mean, that's the whole point of them is to get you rethink next time to do that. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Especially, I mean, you know, if you're going to try to zoom across and try to get, you know, you're going to hit those at a pretty decent speed and you'll, you'll feel it. And are those going to be put like right next to each other all the way along, or are they going to be spaced by a, quite a distance? Or? We have a specific, but uh, enough to where, um, you know, the one, the like we we look at the wheel patterns essentially, and so we'll 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 look at the spacing to make sure that there's not a big enough gap to where someone can just you know miss them. You know, when I saw this, I thought it was going to be a raised uh, little median with that chevron, but it's just striping. And I agree with Rusty; people are still going to go over there. So if they still do that. From an engineering standpoint, uh, will that cause more accidents by designing it this way? Um, I don't believe so. Like I said, I, I think you know it'll, it'll take the public some time to kind of get used to the new, the new geometry and the new configuration of the design. And you know, if, if someone were to try that, I, we would hope that you know our new design would deter them from doing that the next time. So. Okay. Hey, Ivan, real quick on that again, just to sound like a broken record. I completely agree with all that because we see it all the time. They'll definitely go across those. Is, now, this may be a question I need to ask the um, uh, patrol, but there's nothing illegal about going over those, correct? It's just a matter of, it's just a pain in the butt. Is that correct? Do you know that? Um, I, I, I can't say 100% that it's illegal, but I want to say that you're you're not meant you're not supposed to do that. Just okay. like you, whenever you know if if you if you've been driving along, there's usually like double whites coming off ramps. Right. You're not right. meant to. There's a sign that says you're not meant to go over them. Well, people do it all the time, but whether that can be enforced, I'm not quite sure on that. But the idea is that the pavement markings sh you, you shouldn't traverse them. Correct. So my issue there, though, is if it's just the, uh, um, you know, the, those raised uh, bumps there, if it's completely legal to go over them, it's just not recommended. My issue is because people will, and they'll, they'll make a mad dash across it and either cause damage to their vehicle or, um, you know, back up traffic even more, and then they're going to try to hold the city liable for any damage from 
trying to. But if, again, if it's illegal, then, then that obviously that's going to fall back on them. But I'd agree with, with the rest that we're certainly going to still have those folks, uh, unless there's an actual physical barrier stopping them, they will definitely go across. Because coming out of that parking lot, I'd venture to say a lot of the traffic is going to head south, and that's exactly where they're going to come out of. Um, you know, I would deal with that often. Uh, and then letting people through, trying to be the nice guy. Next thing you know, they're stopped right in front of me, waiting to get over the, the far left lane. It's like, okay, that's, I thought you were just going to get right in front of me, not wait, you know, a year to get over. So that, that is a concern there for me. So I, I you know, as we're, you guys are going through all the, you guys are obviously a lot smarter than I am being engineers. That's just one concern that I would definitely echo. Um, and then my other was from an engineering standpoint, um, have you or it, it was Todd, right? Is that the, uh, the, the actual engineer? Um, the, right. Not the actual, the other engineer that's going to be on this project. Is that it? Yes. Okay, awesome. Have you all ever seen any? Because I, I certainly understand the, um, uh, you know, the, the islands being safe for pedestrians. Um, have you all seen any, any engineering um, of these islands that? I guess doesn't make it a panhandler friendly intersection at all. Have y'all seen anything at all? Because I know a lot of the ones that we're building now, they're super nice and they're super inviting. And if you know about this area, you'll know that that particular intersection, um, you know, we constantly have an issue with panhandlers there. And you'll see Fort Worth Police at this point, they just pop right up in the intersection and they'll make contact. But I'm just wondering from an uh, engineering perspective, if you guys have seen anything that kind of like, uh, I guess still makes it safe for pedestrians, but not necessarily great for a Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think I've, I've seen a, an engineering design that kind of it reduces that. Um, I think it's um, it, it, people are just going to go where where they go. Um, so I, I don't think, unfortunately, that our design will prohibit that in any way. Gotcha. Okay, I was just curious. I'm, I'm not necessarily from this particular one, but just in general. So, I, well, thank you. I appreciate that. Todd, Todd, you're with Freezing Williams, right? Todd, Rusty, yes, I'm with Freezing Nichols. That's correct. Yeah, Freezing Nichols. Now, is as Freezing Nichols looked at that situation anywhere else in the country? Not that I've heard of. Uh, a lot of what we've heard from different cities is the enforcement side of that, and I know there's a handful of signs across Fort Worth as well. Right. At times, those can be successful. Other times, they can be ignored. Mm -hmm. The I have not seen a physical design that would specifically yeah, re remove that opportunity. I can think of different places in Fort Worth, even on TxDOT interstate roadways, that you would think someone would not be able to panhandle that has maybe no shoulder or a metal being guard fence that's along the edge of the road and people are still there uh, panhandling, asking for money or other handouts. So it, yeah. it seems like there's a lot of where there's a will, there's a way at, at some point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, we can talk to the city to see if there's any options out there uh, that can be explored. Uh, but it does seem like that's a, it's, a, it's an enforcement, uh, maybe an enforcement challenge versus a physical design challenge. Yeah. Yeah, I've, and I've seen those. I've seen those situations. Down, there's, there's one down near uh, uh, Brian Irvin. Yes, where, where they're balancing on a gosh darn guardrail. Yes. So, yes. All right. Uh, Ivan, what kind of uh, just what kind of disruption do you see um, for traffic during this construction? It doesn't look like it doesn't look like a lot of the construction is actually in existing road, except for the left turn lanes. Yeah, um, we'd have to get with the contractor and kind of talk through what they're thinking with regards to TCP. But similar to the other intersection. Um, uh, we don't anticipate the intersection having to be closed. However, there will have to be definitely lanes shut down. Um, mm -hmm. So there, you will see probably a significant lane reduction depending on the phasing of it. But um, you know, to get into inside that uh, that median to make those cuts and work inward, 
maybe not so much the paving, but as far as making those cuts um, initially, um, we we may be looking at uh, maybe um, closing a lane or two, and then possibly just reducing the width of the lanes. Okay. This isn't much different than than what you did at Basswood, is it? I'm not. I'm not familiar with that um, project. Okay. Right. Anybody have any more questions or comments? Just um, Ivan and Todd, this is Susan Kenny again. Um, I guess when I'm looking at this design, I don't really see how it will be very safe for pedestrians. And there are a lot of high school students that walk over from Fossil Hill or Fossil Ridge High School and go over to Super Walmart. Um, these are many, many lanes, you know, that people are going to be crossing. And I know I see North Tarrant. Uh, Parkway and Park Vista a lot. That's kind of the way I go. And there are many times I see high schoolers that are walking to my neighborhood, which is Park Glen, and they're like sitting in the middle or standing in the middle in the median because they didn't make it all the way across. And this is so many more lanes. And I just can't imagine how this could be safe uh, for people crossing. I just, I don't think it was designed at all with the thought of the pedestrian, or maybe it was, I don't know, maybe it can explain to me, but I think here you have to make it all the way across after that little island for the pork chop all the way across, or otherwise you're gonna really be sticking in the middle and uh, maybe get hit by one of those left turning vehicles or a straight through person. And that kind of goes back to what Aziz was speaking earlier um, with regards to the pedestrian push buttons. Um, all that is taken into account when installing these and designing these with those traffic signals to make sure that pedestrians are able to get across safely and not be stranded um, um, in those midpoints. Um, while the inside, we are introducing a right turn lane, or sorry, a left turn lane in the, in the median. We're just cutting down the median. So we're not actually making it any wider. Um, where we could be making it wider would be at these corners. Um, however, we that's where that that pork chop, uh, what we call it, um, comes in, and that can act as a refugee area um, for those pedestrians. Okay, I feel like the medians. And by the way, are those medians concrete or grass? Those are grass. Today they are grass. Okay, I feel like. Um, Somehow, can you not make a pedestrian refuge area there, at least in the middle, if they can't make it all the way across? Because I, I know what you're saying about pushing the button, but a lot of people go later or they just try to rush it. And there are going to be people that aren't going to make it all the way across because they started later than they should have. And we don't want them to get, you know, hit just because they made a mistake, right? Uh, so, um, do you, so I guess what you're thinking is they're going to be standing in front of that median nose and they'll be okay. I guess my concern is that left turn lane that's right next to that median, you know, they could easily hit somebody that's standing there that doesn't make it all the way across. But is there any solution that could help the pedestrian, I guess, is what I'm asking. And Susan, this is Todd real quick. And I will say that you maybe like you said, there may be some experiences today where people are in those median areas that are using it for a refuge and one thing that is different today that will be, or something that's today that will be different when whenever we construct this project is we are using and upgrading the pedestrian signal heads to be countdown signal heads where it tells you how many seconds are left for that walking movement. Uh, today, those do not exist. So people do not know how much time is left on the crossing movement and, like I said, could be stranded in the center. Where those will now have the signal heads for pedestrians will now have that timer that people can observe and 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 understand that if I start when that countdown starts, I can make it all the way through, uh, or else they will be able to, they'll need to stay uh, on that corner and not use that median as a refuge. 
Is this more of like a highway design? Like I wouldn't imagine you would do this design in downtown Fort Worth where you're trying to promote walkability, would you? Uh, I'm yeah, not sure cool. what the, uh, and maybe Aziz is more uh, familiar with, with the differences of how the crosswalks would be in a downtown area than I, but I think it would be, it's it's the same concept, I, I believe, um, downtown Fort Worth, we have those similar countdowns as well. Hello, um, my name is Chris, and if you actually just go up to the intersection at Heritage Trace and Beach, it looks just like what you're proposing. And I cross that intersection all the time. I walk through there all the time and do not have any issues with it at all. Yeah, yeah I was gonna say real quick, uh, Susan, uh, just to alleviate some of your concerns, I, I know what you're saying, but you know that median right now is super wide. Uh, I mean, huge median. And so like, even if you're looking at the, um, and I'll send you a text here in a moment, show you the overhead, like just cutting into one more lane they're still going to have plenty of room if they need to seek refuge in the actual grassy part. They'll have plenty part because if you look at the lanes right now, it's like 37 or so feet. Um, the, the actual lanes themselves. Um, and then if you were to measure the median currently, it's like 56, 57 feet. So they'll still have plenty of room um, there for, for refuge. Thank you. That'll be good. We hope this was informative and um, helps alleviate concerns with regards to this intersection uh, moving forward. Um, sounds like we have no more questions. Hey, but, Ivan, I got, I've, I've got one, one question more, huh? for you. One more. Go ahead. That, not, that doesn't have to do with the actual construction here, but when you take down the existing traffic signal equipment, what happens to those poles and arms? They will be removed completely, um, but not before the first the the proposed ones are up and running. I understand. What do you What does the city do with those poles and arms after they take them down? Um, I'm not sure on that. Well, I I bet as he's, as he's and his team uh, do reuse those as they do salvage them and bring them down to the city yard in South Fort Worth. Depending on the condition, yeah. Right. Okay, so you so you do try to reuse them at another intersection. If they're up to code and have the, the if it's a reusable piece of equipment, that's correct. Okay, because we're having a terrible time getting these certain things. And anywhere we can make use of. Um, the ones we take down, the better. Because it's the lead time on these new arms and poles is just absolutely absurd. Timing wise, I mean, I'm sure that it's necessary, but it's just, you know, eight to 10 months to get it. those kinds of poles and arms are just absolutely absurd, I would think. City use those for uh, lockdown location. Okay. All right. Well, thank y'all, everyone, for joining these public meetings. Um, Thank you for those that stayed through both wait, of them. Hey, wait, hey, 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 wait a minute. There's, there's a bunch of stuff in the chat here. Let yeah, me go through. Was, let me. I was. Let me, go I was through, just, let me go through some of them. Yeah, um, I was just about to say there's questions in the chat. Uh, Rusty, are you okay. going to read them? Go ahead. Sorry about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, are U-turns prohibited at these intersections? Aziz, do you know that? U-turns are not prohibited. 
They are not prohibited. They are not prohibited because uh, they are channelized right turns, so it's not conflict with the left turn. The right turns are channelized. Would you consider heavy landscaping the medians with various cactus to make it less panhandling friendly? I saw that there in the chat. That's interesting. I'm not sure if we could do that. It also, yeah, there saves, been... also, also saves water. Lily's point, she's saying they would, uh, then it would be even more unsafe for a pedestrian refuge. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a it's a it's it's a trade off, isn't it? Those are the those are the those are the questions that you didn't answer. People are saying thank you for the meeting. That, we really there's there's a question about the Walmart exit being closed. Could the exit from Walmart be closed? And I don't think we would be successful at trying to get that exit closed. No. Um, and then there's a um, suggestion to look at. Let's see, Riverside and North Tarrant for the separation. So I went and looked at that in Google Maps just now at Riverside and North Tarrant instead of the Chevrons. It looks like we have installed sort of a raised landscape median to provide the separation for the from the turn lanes between the through lanes. So um, Aziz, is, is there a reason other than budgetary reasons why, you know, sometimes we, we have a median in that area compared to just a Chevron stropping? Uh, the two things, like, is the one, like, operation-wise, if it's needed to, like, the permitted. So, that is what you have to make, uh, like, a head-to-head -head left turn. So, in that case, we have to do, like, a uh, left turn with, uh, like, a median there. So, and another thing is the cost. So both like, okay. uh, what is that? Do our like the traffic signal operation require that or not? Because uh, doing that the way we did it at the river side is a more uh, costlier uh, solution than this one. Okay. If it doesn't, our operation doesn't require that we, we yeah, we don't uh, uh, suggest that. Okay. Are they going to cut in another exit out of the um, southwest corner? If you notice where the only exit is on the southwest corner from those shopping center, they would, if you wanted to make a left, you're going to have to cross this new median or these bumps or whatever. Say that again, ma'am. If you're in the southwest corner of this intersection mm -hmm. and coming out of that little shopping center, which right now has hardly anything in it. But if you want to go north on beach, you will have to cross those bump things you're talking about to make it, to get into the left lane. Well, you can come out. You can come out, you can go across into the CBS and then come out. The bumps are only along the gore that is striped in front of Walmart. Oh, I see. not proposing that on the, the southwest corner coming out of the CBS. So the other side won't have that. No. Okay. I didn't realize that. Thank Rahul, you. Do, you, do you know why you did not use the same design as Basswood? Because Basswood, if you look at Basswood, they separate the travel lanes with the turn lanes with a uh, concrete pad, raised concrete pad. Um, it just, can you guys look at that? It may not be possible. I have no idea, but, but 
if you look at basswood, uh, the east west on basswood is uh, is um, the two lanes, the two turn lanes are separated from the th through lanes with a concrete pad that's uh, curb height. Yes, I uh, think we initially designed uh, like a first uh, basswood on that way, and we get also some. Uh, uh, Citizen complain for missing the left turn, not get able to get in opportunity to get in later in the left turn pocket. So that's there's like both like pros and cons of doing that way as well. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. it, it, but this one I think has a uh, drainage in uh, structure in, in the median, uh, so it's going to be impacted. So uh, I think that 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 is another reason not uh, do, uh, doing it that way for this uh, this location. Okay, so you did look at it. Mm -hmm. Okay. When you add those medians, like, you know, what a few people are talking about, those raised medians, it does give the panhandlers another area to walk along. And so, you know, it, it might be a thought as to not really wanting that. Yeah, no, you're right. It does. It does do that. Okay. Well, just thought I'd bring it up. Thank you very much, Ivan, for putting this together, and um, Todd for being on the being on the call. Thanks, uh, Laura and uh, and Chad Allen for being being here too. We really appreciate your. Um, the, the staff coming out here and telling us what's going on at various and sundry times so we can at least comment and see what's going on. And hopefully those um, comments, if they can be implemented, they will be. And if they can't, they won't. You know, but we're, we're, we're very happy to see the improvements coming to Far North. Thank you. Second that. Thanks, Rusty. Thank y'all for y'all's time. We hope everyone um, got some good information out of this. Um, we will be posting these uh, these uh, presentations as well as the videos of these uh, meetings um, to each project pages. Um, and like I mentioned before, if you have any questions regarding these projects, um, feel free to reach out to me. Um, my contact information will be on those presentations. Look forward to seeing you in May. Thank you. All. You have a great night. Thank Everyone you. Have so a good night. Much. Bye.